morning. Breakfast with the broker every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. Listen, it's holiday week. It's Christmas week. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. And uh, we're uh, actually getting into 2021. Not that 2021 is going to just all of a sudden be like, all right, bye bye 2020 and uh, everything starts over. But uh, um, we hope that 21 is a better year for most of you. So um, listen, I got a really, really exciting guest here. Uh, we talk about marketing all the time. We talk about uh, creating and growing your businesses. And uh, we have someone to help you grow your business today. So uh, let's talk. And now, by way of Pleasanton, California, she is the VP of Business Development at Corefact. She has worked in the real estate field as a marketing coordinator, coal banker, and at Express Doc. Way early on the West Coast, she is Sierra Stewart. Oh, what, with that kind of intro, I feel like there should be a... <laughs> <laughs> That's great energy. Thanks for having me, David. I'm excited to uh, be here. We were really, really excited to have you, and um, I, uh, I do use uh, Corefact as uh, we were talking off air, and you know, really is a great product. Uh, tell us a little bit about Corefact, how you know maybe the history of it, and then we'll get into you know why direct mail is so successful. Yeah, absolutely. We're a marketing company, and we are hyper focused on the real estate industry. So while we do fulfillment for a couple of other industries, primarily what we do is help real estate agents grow their business and market their listings. So that's something that we're super familiar with and our content, if you go to our site, corefact.com, you'll see that all of our content is really geared towards real estate. So that's our, our niche market. And we've been uh, in business for 15 years and, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, just briefly, we've been in business for 15 plus years and uh, really, our, our aim is to help you close more business, promote yourself, promote your listings. And you, uh, and apparently, you love real estate agents or something like that. <laughs> we, we get, <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we get a thrill out of helping our clients conduct more business because it, uh, it's exciting. And and at the yeah. end of the day, we're helping homeowners get into their homes. It's it's you love it. Everyone loves it. We love this industry. Uh, absolutely. I was just kidding. You know. So when when you look at um direct mail it, in itself, and you know why certain companies are, are successful, you know one of the things that gravitated me to Corefact, uh, besides the testimonials and people you know reviewing it, was the creativity of the marketing pieces. Mm -hmm. So you know, and it's constantly ever changing, and you know that's what I love because you know customers, you know. Yes, it's nice to see just listed and just sold and all those things. And, you, you know, it's almost you have to do that. You know, to, but some of the other create, I mean, there's some amazing, especially during this COVID, like you came, you guys came up with some great pieces. Yeah, thank you. I mean, we do pride ourselves on our um, creativity and that's, you're at, you hit the nail on the head. We are constantly updating our pieces, updating our content. There's so much for you to choose from and the flexibility that you can go in and make alterations. So if you like the concept or the look, but maybe not exactly the wording or exactly the, the, the layout, you can go in and change it. So it's just how you like it. But we're always taking things off, adding things on. I can't even keep up with all the, the pieces that our art, our art team does. We have thousands of products online. So you're absolutely right. There's, and when, when COVID hit beginning of this year, we, like everyone else, pivoted is that the buzzword for two, uh, 2020? <laughs> pivot. We, pivot. <laughs> <laughs> we pivoted really quickly and we were actually um as far as we knew the first in our industry to have covid related material that addressed um that we would you know that agents uh, you would still be there for your clients that uh, the market would continue that the market was still strong so um, we were really proud of our ability to get that new content out and you know what's great also is that you know they put you put a, a code on um, on those postcards, and you know it, it sends them to a site you know to get uh, free home values and those kind of things. And you know usually, you know people, are, especially now, I mean the market's really really hot, um, especially in South Florida. And when you're looking at South Florida real estate, 
I mean, people want to know how much their value is. You know, all they do is they hear about their neighbors selling their house and, oh my God, that you sold it for X amount of dollars per square foot. And, da, da, da. and you know, this is an opportunity to pique their uh, kind of curiosity and, and really get them kind of hooked and, and maybe incubate them for a little bit of time. So it's a little bit different what Corfac does than some of the other direct mail companies. Yeah, we, we have a couple um, interesting elements. One is just, we were one of the first to print variable data meaning every uh, every postcard that, that is received is different. It might have your name, your address, a little bit about your home. Maybe it says we're looking for a home that's four bed, three bath, and that's what your home has. We were the first to have that. And then to your point, that call to action that you're referring to, where you get a unique code and you can go to the website and enter the code in and then see an estimated home value range. And we don't ever we don't ever pretend that we're the real estate agent and can give you the home value. That's what you're there for as, as their um, listing agent is to really help you figure that out. But we give a range and we show recent home sales in the area. And what that does is it sets the person who's sending the mail out, uh, the, the real estate agent as the expert and starts that conversation. So, and you're absolutely right with um, COVID happening. What, something that we really noticed was the interaction with that key code went up by 50%. And we were trying to identify what, why is direct mail so hot right now? What's going on? And initially in March and April, we saw a huge spike. And what we identified and it has continued is because people are working out of their homes more now, their interaction with their direct mail is way more exciting than it used to be. For some people, that's the one time they leave their house. Right. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll, I'll be right back. I'm going to the mailbox. <laughs> right? I mean, it's true. It's like, wow, I'm taking my garbage. Out. You, I mean, you probably saw I was telling you joking about TikTok earlier, but there were videos of people getting dressed up to take their garbage out. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it, it's funny because you see the creativity of society, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and the humor because, you know, there's a certain degree of truth in, our, in all humor. And um you know, all of us have been there. We're like, oh my God, we get to go to the mailbox. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> There's actually a phenomenon called, and we've, you know, in the direct mail industry, we've known about this for ages, but it's called the mail moment. And it's the moment of expectation where you open the mailbox and maybe there's something good in there. And it's this interaction that you have. And it's not like opening your email. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm pretty sure Amazon built their business based on this whole, you know, kind of expecting it, right? Because yeah. every day I come home and I see three or four packages. If I don't see three or four packages at my front door, I'm like, what happened? Is everything all right? You know? No <laughs> <laughs> more packages. Not this time of year, right? Oh, yeah, it's crazy. But, uh, you know, so let's talk about the direct mail. You know, a lot of people, you know, real estate agents, I mean, you know, it can be costly to obviously uh, do direct mail mm -hmm. as opposed to maybe internet advertising or digi sure. digital marketing. And, you know, people don't get into direct mail. Well, no one's ever going to read that. I don't know. You know, and, you know, I see, you know, all these other, you know, 20, 30 year old, 30, uh, you know, year of experience of direct mail in their neighborhood. So I'm not going to have penetration there and such. Mm -hmm. What, um, what would you say that a real estate agent that may be viewing that hasn't really got into direct mail or is kind of kind of tippy toed around direct mail for the last couple of years? Um, what's your advice to them? Um, um, number one, number one consistency, and yeah. don't start. Don't thinking start thinking. Okay, maybe it's gone. <laughs> Um, but, but one of the biggest uh, mistakes I see people do is, you know, if you've got a budget for direct mail is they, this is number one mistake is they send out a large number of pieces one time. <laughs> and nope. That's an introduction. That is not a marketing plan. <laughs> so what we really recommend and the way to build a direct mail business and have that be a part of a, a 360 marketing component. And, and we don't ever say that you should only direct mail, but it's a really healthy way to either introduce yourself to a market or to uh, complement something that's that's online. The other um, element with direct mail is it's tangible. And there's actually been some studies showing that millennials believe print more than they do online advertising. You know, the whole concept of fake news is that it's so easy to fabricate anything that's an email or online, whereas something that's in print, actually people feel like it's more truthful and authentic because it, they took the effort to print it. 
That being said, um, if you send out something one time and then you don't repeat it or you disappear after three, four months, the impression in the marketplace is that you went out of business. And that's, that's really dangerous because if people think, oh, they can't sustain a marketing effort, they must, not, they must, they must have had to go get a real job. Right. That's kind of the impression that people have. So that's number one is be consistent. I would rather see someone with a small budget pick 50 houses in an area that they want to target and just mail to those 50 for 12 months. And I would rather see someone do that than mail to 1,200 one time. And when you talk about affordability, we actually now have um, with Corefact and a lot of uh, places offer this the ability to send EDDM. Are you familiar with EDDM, David? Yeah, you know, I, I think the the one issue with EDDM is we have so many people that are, um, you know, we might have sixty percent of our market or forty percent of our market that are seasonal. Um, so the EDDM, you know, doesn't always work for us. You know, it's, it's I know it's an introduction in it, and we've tried EDDM. Um, I just prefer that. I honestly, I prefer first class, so I know that they're actually getting there. At least first class for the first two or three months, yeah. So you understand your mailing list, yeah. And then you say, okay, all right, well, I'm going to take this one off. I'm going to take this one off, so you're not continuing to pay for another twelve months, twenty four months for someone that's not receiving it. Absolutely. Well, and and with our system and many others, you can alternate. So maybe when you know that people are there, you know, in the winter months, then you send the EDDM. And then um, to your point, first class, and the difference between first class, uh, do, do your um, watchers know the difference? Should we talk about it for a minute? Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Yeah, let's talk so about it. We have three options and a lot of mailing houses do. EDDM is every door direct mail, and it allows you to blanket basically a courier route. So you're not going to choose the individual homes that you wanna to send to, and it's not going to have the uh, recipient's name on it. It will just go blanket to a courier route, and you'll be able to hit a lot of homes at a lower price. So that's the benefit to sending EDDM, but you're not going to be able to take advantage of our call to action or variable data because everybody gets the same thing. You'll also be at the bottom of that mail pile. So I don't know if you notice when you get your mail, you've got your first class on top, you've got your standard mail at the bottom, and then you've got your flyers and your, your EDDM at the very bottom. You're gonna be at the bottom with EDDM. That's okay, because you're just, you know, you're, that could be just one of your strategies. Then you've got your standard mail, which takes uh, five to seven business days to arrive and does not have, to your point, the forwarding or return service on it. So it's a little bit, um, sorry, five, um, five to 15 business days to arrive. And then at the very top, you've got your first class mail. And that's two to five days. Anything that's listing related, the way the market is right now, please send first class mail. <laughs> we have so many people that send open house, um, you know, standard and then the open house was a week ago. And you just, if it's listing related, the way the market is first class all the way. If you're promoting yourself, that's when you could potentially send standard. And then with your point, uh, David, with the uh, return addresses and the forwarding, if you want to know who's getting your mail, you need to do first class so you can get those returns and update your list. Make sure you have a really healthy list. Yeah, I mean, my biggest advice, you know, and, and you know, I, I guess you come through advice through experiences or past mistakes. Uh, but yeah, what I would say, if you're starting to farm an area and you have that mailing list, you know, send for the first two, three months, first class, even though it's a little more expensive, because then you're able to iron out what that mailing list is. You right. know, and, and and then you could then you could send a standard mail and it's, you know, you know, it sends on every second of the month or tenth of a month or whatever that day is but yeah. uh yeah i definitely highly recommend doing a uh, first class for that first few uh, times do you, you know the other question i always had is you know so you're you're farming a a, a farm area right so you're, you're you're sending direct mail to your quote-unquote farm area and then you get a uh just you know a listing or you sell something outside the area yeah um are you know would you recommend sending just listed and sold there, you know, to communities that you may not necessarily work. Um, um, you might be a little further away from your area. Uh, it deep, yeah, absolutely. So um, I kind of look at it like like Vegas. When you when you get a good hand in blackjack, then you kind of keep going, right? <laughs> you want to. Not my analogy. You, you must, <laughs> we must know each other. <laughs> but right, you did something that is good. You want to keep that going, right? So one, one thing, I, and, and this is not your question, but I want to address it. One time, once people think, oh, I sold outside this area. I'm not going to let my normal farm know 
because that doesn't, that's not their area. Of course you let your normal farm know because they may know someone or they may want to move there, or maybe they didn't know that you would work outside of their area. All, of course, you're going to let your normal farm know when you sell something outside of their area. So that's number one. Number two is, um, yeah, because if, especially if you want to expand your business and continue to work there, um, take advantage of that. That's how you gain momentum. That's how you gain um, exposure. And if people now know, but but I wouldn't just send a just listed in and just sold. I might market that area for if it's a farm area you want to obtain and keep working, obviously, then you commit to, to 12 to 24 months, but maybe you do a, a three to six month campaign there and then just kind of see what you get and see there listings, we get listings, right? That's the idea. Absolutely. So right. if, if you've got listings, you're going to get more listings. So take advantage of that. Yeah. He or she owns, uh, you know, inventory owns the market. And uh, especially now with the lack of inventory, you know, direct mail has never been, you know, as popular as it is now. We had a question, you know, I know you work for uh, work with a, a variety of, of different brands, whether it's independent brokerage or large brokerage yeah. uh, brands. You know, do you have like the Cole Banker and the KW and the Remax templates um, embedded into your uh, um, core fact? We do. So we work with a lot of the major brokerages. Um, on our, our site, there are a couple of different um, things you can do. One is we can, um, if you inquire with our customer service team, we can give you what that unique URL or access point is for some of the larger brokerages. For some of the smaller brokerages, we can actually set that up for you. So if you are the broker or the marketing director and you'd like us to create templates for you or, or a custom experience for you, we can do that. Um, and then finally, if you're just a, if not, I shouldn't say just, but if you're coming in um, and you just like to use our, our site, and use your colors, we actually have the ability for you to customize your templates with a little drop down. You can choose your color scheme. So we've got a lot of different color schemes to choose from. You upload your logo and it actually looks like it's branded to your company, even though it may not be a custom template for your company. So we allow a lot of flexibility. What kind of feedback do you get on the length of time from starting to direct mail a farm area to maybe your first call? or your first listing appointment? Oh gosh, there's so many variables <laughs> with that. That's a, hard, a hard question, you know, how, how many um, listings, what's the turnover rate in that area? Who else is um, farming that community? You know, you mentioned earlier, sometimes when you uh, start a farm area, uh, there's someone that has, you know, 50, 60% market share already. Well, that's gonna take a little bit longer if someone's dominating that that market share. Whereas if, if it's spread across a whole bunch of different um, agents and maybe everyone has five to 10% market share that might take less time because um, it will be easier to infiltrate that area. That, I mean, it's, it's hard to say, but it's all about being consistent and um, being in that market area. Uh, it could be anywhere from six to 12 months. What we generally hear, and NAR did a study on this, is um, you know, I, and again, I refer to that 12 month marketing campaign, um, NAR did a study and they said most marketing campaigns are 12 months. And a lot of times people will get their first call at the 13th or 14th month, which means a lot of people are giving up too soon. So, you know, maybe 12 months isn't long enough. Maybe it should be more of the 24 month concept, but it is, it does take time. Yeah. I, I tell people that, you know, and, and to your point, um, your prior point is that I, I tell, you know, my agents that, listen, if you're going to do direct mail, you know, you have to have an 18 to 24 month budget. It's got to be in your marketing bank account right. and you just take that part every single time. And if you have, let's say you have $2,000 to, to budget, then you got to stretch that over the 18 months. Uh, to make sure that you have enough and maybe, you know, at a certain commission, you take a percentage out of that commission uh, to put in your marketing budget to add to it. But, um, uh, you know, to, again, to your points, you have to start small and you have to start somewhere and direct mail is an integral part of, you know, any kind of successful real estate business. And in order to grow your business, it's very difficult to just grow your business through digital marketing. Doesn't mean it can't be done. Doesn't mean it hasn't been done but it may be more the exception than the rule. Right, and what we've seen too is, um, especially, uh, you know, I mentioned with COVID and, and quarantine, the um, increase in interaction with direct mail, but even prior to that, there's so much digital and we're online so often and we're getting inundated. I don't know how many emails you, you get a day between your personal and your Gmail, <laughs> um, you know, and everyone thinks, oh gosh, email's so cheap, I'm gonna, I'm gonna email. 
would you rather be one of, I don't know, 120 emails that somebody got? Or would you rather be one of maybe five pieces of mail that they got? Where do you think you're going to stand out more? Um, and then same thing with, you know, social media advertising, we're getting blind to the social media advertising or, you know, the Facebook uh, marketing, the online advertising, because it's, I, I, right now I have three ads I'm looking at and I'm not looking at them <laughs> because I just don't see them anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, the market, <clears throat> you know, it's it, anything that works gets saturated, right? So like, you know, email marketing, you know, five years ago was, was very successful. It, it, not to say that it isn't successful now because people still read their sure. emails sure. but at some point i could tell you right now i mean i don't know if they i'm sure they've done studies but i know personally that i don't look at my email nearly as much as i did last from a, even a year ago or two years ago whatever yeah. you know i look at more of my social media and my text so right. you know if you're going to do some you know creative marketing you, you should do some you know text marketing and direct mail marketing to kind of combine the two or, or, or something to that effect. But, um, you know, I think that the, the, the products that you guys put out um, are excellent, but I think direct mail in whoever you use um, it is, it has got to be an integral part of your real estate business. It's got to be there. Right. Right. Well, like I was saying earlier, it's the tangible aspect. And so our eyes are tired. Our kids are tired of being on Zoom. We're all tired of being online. And, right. and so to have something that's a touchy-feely, it's, it's a break. It's a break. And so you're going to resonate a little bit more if you're on a printed, printed piece. I think that was pretty um, uh, funny that you, you said that there was a study that, um, that uh, millennials you know, are, are trusting print material more than online material. Mm -hmm. And it got me thinking, like, you know what? It used to, like I look at the newspaper and I almost trust the newspaper more than I trust the, you know, ABC or CBS or whatever, NBC news, you know, it's like, yeah. you look at it and you're like, well, they took the time to print it. Yep. It's kind of changing the behaviors of um, society. It absolutely is. Yeah. We thought that was a really interesting study as well. Uh, but it makes it. sense. It makes sense because it, it really is easy to produce things digitally. Whereas it, it actually takes, you know, machines, people, time to produce things. On, um, and our, our turnaround time is really quick, but um, it just, it's a little more effort to produce something that's physical. Great. Well, I always end the uh, um, conversation or interview with um, two questions, last two questions. Okay. Uh, one is, uh, what's your favorite uh, streaming series? Whether it was Netflix or whatever, what series mm -hmm. did, uh, is like your all-time favorite? Okay. And what are you currently watching? Um. Okay, so my favorite series is Glee. Um, and I, I am actually watching it through I, maybe the sixth time. Um, and, what, and what I'm watching right now is, um, oh my gosh, uh, I, this is a guilty pleasure and I'm kind of embarrassed, but I'm watching it with my daughter and we bond over it. I'm watching The Bachelorette. <laughs> <laughs> and that's awesome. Oh, it's your daughter. Uh, she's 15. Okay, so I have a 15 year old as well. Okay. I'm still sleeping. Uh, I'm sure yours is as well. Right as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you very much, Sarah. I really appreciate it. Um, if you want more information on Corfac, definitely visit their site. Uh, they got a, a lot of programs. They do custom, customized things. They do a, a elite program uh, that uh, I currently subscribe to. Uh, that it's, it's been really good. I mean, uh, it's getting. It I mean, market penetration in, into the farm area and such. Um, but the main thing is make sure you have a budget um, and spread it over that 18 months so that you're, you know, you have more success. And understand that, you know, it's kind of set it and forget it because uh, if you uh, start taking from that marketing budget, um, you're not going to be successful and you're going to stop it. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, again, Corfax Sierra Stewart. Um, Every Tuesday morning, Breakfast with the Broker. We're looking forward to our next guest next Tuesday. Thank you so much. Have a great week. Have a Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. And we'll see you next Tuesday. Thanks so much. Thank you.